Hi guys. So in this video, we are going to create uh, the invader and um, to also add the animation using the frames that we've created in the Piscop app. So first of all, let's start by importing the invader. So we are going to choose a sprite and upload. Start by uploading only the first frame of the first invader. And after we upload the first frame of the first invader, we'll go into the costume section and add the other one. So invader one, frame two, and we have the other one. So yeah. So we have the first frame and the second frame of the invader. And now we are going to create the animation between these two frames. And basically the animation is consists of cycling between the frames to give the illusion of movement. So the code that we need to add is to cycle between the first frame and the second frame in a way that it looks like the invader is moving. So let's see how we can do it. So we want the animation to start when the game starts and to continue running uh, while the game is uh, working. So to do that, we already know what to do. So we need a green flag but, uh, block. So when the green flag is clicked, we are going to do something. And if it's to, if the animation will be running throughout the entire game, we need a forever block. So connect a forever block to the green flag block. And now let's see how we can change the, the sprite costume. Oh, and a thing that I just remembered. I don't know why, but so far I've been calling the, the sprites, I've been calling them actors. And I don't know exactly why, but I figured that Sprite actually, uh, Sprite, Scratch actually called them, called the, calls them uh, sprites and not actors. So maybe from now on, I'll try to call them sprites as I uh, should be doing from the beginning. I don't know where I got the actors from, but okay, <laughs> just something to, because I'm changing this, so uh, I think you, <laughs> I should explain why. Um, so. Let's go back. So we have the green flag uh, block and we have the forever block. And now let's go over to the looks category. And this is where we have uh, blocks to change the costumes. And we have basically two different blocks to change costumes. We have a block that allows us to change the costume to a specific one. So you can see that uh, we have the block that says switch costume to invader 1, 2 or invader 1, 1. These are the names that I, I gave my, my images. So this means that invader one, which are the invaders on the bottom. And then we have the invader two, which are the, 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 one, the other ones. And we have the invader three, which are the ones at the top. And after, so we have invader one and then underscore one is the first frame and two is the second frame. So in my sprites, I have invader one slash, uh, slash uh, underscore one, invader two underscore one and two, invader three underscore one and two also. So, this block allows us to change, to switch the costume to a specific one. And we also have another block that allows us to change the costume to the next one. So if the invader is on costume number one, it will change costume number two. If it's on number two, it will cycle and go back to number one. And this is basically what we want right now. So let's just drag the next costume inside the forever block and run the green flag. And you can see that it's actually working. <laughs> it's cycling uh, through both frames, you know, but it's really fast. And that's because since it's inside the forever block, it's changing the, the invader costume uh, on each frame. That's why it's really fast and we can, can't almost see it. So what we need to do to be able to see it properly and to create uh, a proper animation, I mean, to slow down this animation is to add a new block, which is the wait seconds block. And this, what we'll do is it will stop the execution of the forever block here, wait for one second, and only then come back and execute again. So it changes the costume, waits one second, and change to the next costume, waits one second. So right now it's changing the costume one time per second. So you see, and now we have animate we have the animation that we want, but it's really slow. <laughs> So we need uh, to change the, the value of the seconds to a, um, a smaller number. So let's 
make it 0 0.2, which I think is a good value for our animation. And you see, it's a lot better. This is exactly what we want. So it's changing, it's um, switching to one costume, waits 0 0.2 seconds, switch to one, uh, the other one, waits again, and goes back in this loop. So, this is the animation. It's really simple, as you see. Um, and now, uh, let's see how we can create the other invaders. Because right now, we only have the animation for the first invader. We only have the first invader and the animation for, for that invader. And to create the other ones, we, the first solution that we might think of would be to just repeat this whole process and import the, the sprites for the other ones. But that will lead to another big problem that I really don't like because we can do it, but since we, we'll, if we do it, we're going to have three different sprites here. Uh, we need to copy and maintain that uh, the code uh, equal between all those sprites because since the invaders have all the same beha the same behavior, we need to make sure that that behavior is synced every time we make changes. To one of uh, to the code of one invader, we need to copy the code or make those changes also to the other one, the other two types of invaders. That's not very efficient, first of all, and it's a not good practice because we like duplicating code is something that we should always try to avoid, not only in Scratch but in almost every <laughs> programming lang languages. I mean, it's a uh, a good practice to don't duplicate code. So to find ways that we can reuse the code in a, so that we can, because, uh, so, because if you think about it, it's more prone to mistakes. Uh, I mean, uh, we can just remember to change, make some changes to invader number one, but we don't remember to make those changes to the other two types of invaders. And then we have bugs and it's really difficult to understand where they are coming from. So this is all just to explain why we are doing uh, things the way we are going to do. So instead of using um, three inviters, instead of uh, importing the other two types of inviters, what we are going to do is that we are going to import all the costumes for all the inviters into a, this single invader that we have, a single sprite that we have. And then we are going to add code to change the costumes or use the costumes only for the invaders that we want. And it seems a lot of work, but it pays off in the long run because then we can just work on the single sprite and we don't need to worry um, about like duplicating code and maintain, maintaining the code in sync between all the sprites that we have. So it pays off in the long run, uh, trust me. So what we are going to do now is we are going to the costume section and we are going to import all the other sprites that we need for the inviters. So let's see what we need to import. So we have invader one and two, we already have that. We have invader two, one, two, two, three, one, three, two. And we also gonna need the invader explosion. These are all the sprites that the invaders are gonna use. So import them all together. Oh, and yeah, I select the invader explosion and since it was uh, before the other ones, it's stuck, it's here in the middle. But so we need to make sure that the order of the sprites is uh, correct because when we are going to be adding code, it's going to be uh, really important that they are all in the same order. So we want invader 1, 1, 1, 2, then 2, 1, 2, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, and the explosion will be at the end of the sprites. So this is the order that we, we need. And now let's select the invader number one. And if we run, you see that now it's really strange because it's cycling between all the sprites. It's waiting 0 0.2 seconds, but it's changing sprite number one, two, three, four, uh, costume number one, two, three, four, five, until the end and then comes back. So we need to add some code to just change the sprites as we had before between the costume number one and the costume number two. And so what we need basically is that when, when the invader is with costume number two, so I mean, when it's using the number one, it will change to the next costume, it will change to number two. But when it reaches number two, it goes back to number one. So the way to do it is we need to add a condition. 
that says when the invader has the costing number two, we are going to switch back to number one. So let me just click this one. Okay, so what we need is an if then block. So if we need a condition, we need an if then block. And the condition is the costume of the invader is equal to number two. So we already know that we have an operator that has a equal that may allow us to make an equal comparison. We can put here number two. And in the looks category, we have a variable which gives us the costume number, which is exactly what we want. So if the costume number equals number two, we are going to sorry, we are going to switch back to the costume number one. And this is what we want. Uh, so let's add this to the forever block at the beginning, at the top of the forever block, and keep all the rest as it was. And now try to run the program. And it stopped working. Uh, yeah, and uh, this was meant to, to do something, <laughs> to do exactly li like this. Because I want to show you what, what's happening. And because it seems that the invader is not switching costumes, but actually it is. What's happening right now is that when the forever block starts, I'm going to say that the invader is on costume number one. It will run the next costume, so it's going to change costume number two, change uh, wait for 0 0.2 seconds, and come back. And then, since it's on costume number two, then it will run the switch costume to number one. But since it will run immediately after afterwards the next costume block, it changes immediately to next uh, to costume number two and only then waits 0 0.2 seconds. So that's why it seems that it's not doing anything. It's actually changing between costumes. But since we are only waiting at the end and we are always running the next costume, it's always on costume number two. So what we need here is a way that we'll run, we'll run, or we'll um, run the switch costume to number one only when the costume number equals two and only when the costume number is not equal to number uh, two, we are going to run the next costume. So if the costume number is, equals, is equal to number two, we switch to number one. Otherwise, we switch to the next costume. And we have a block that allows us to do that. This is a new block, we haven't seen it. It's the if then else block, which basically adds a new section to the block that runs only when the condition is not true. So we know that what's inside here, the if block, runs when this condition is true. And in this block, it's exactly the same, but now we have an option to add some code that only runs when this is false. So let's change the costume number here. Let's put exactly as the same. And let's put the next costume inside the else section. So now what's going to happen is that if costume number uh, if costume number equals to two, then we switch back to number one. Else, it goes to the next costume. So only one of these blocks will run on the uh, every time the loop uh, runs. So let's put it here. The wait second at the end and run the program. And now you see that it's working perfectly. I mean, another option that we we could have also. I forgot to mention is that we could uh, use the if block and, and uh, duplicate the wait seconds and put inside the if block. But that, once again, we'll be, we would be duplicating code and that's never a good practice. And this is it. I mean, this is uh, the basic invader animation. Uh, this is an if else block. One thing to always remember and about the if else block is that only one of the section runs at a single time. It always depends on the condition. When the condition is true, it runs the first section. When the condition is false, it runs the next, uh, the next section. So in this case, when it runs, if costume equal, equals number two, it changes back to one. If it's not number two, meaning that it's if uh, costume number one, it goes to the next costume. And then once again, and then once again, so it repeats like this. And this is it. I mean, this is the basic invader animation. It's really simple to create. Uh, we had some new blocks, uh, costumes blocks, and the if else block. And right now, we are not going to 
worry about creating the code to add all the other different type of invaders because right now we are only using these first two sprites. We still need to add code to use the other ones in the same way. I mean, changing only between these two or changing between only these two. But we are going to add that in a later video because first we're going to add the code to create and instantiate all the invaders that we need in the game. Uh, if you remember the game, let me show you. This one, yeah. We have a lot of invaders. So we have, if I'm not mistaken, five columns by 11. Oh, oh, here, yeah. yeah. So we have five rows, so five rows by 11 columns, which is a lot of invaders. So we are going to, on the next video, we are going to add the code to create all these invaders. And that's it for this video. So I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.